You are listening to Visionaries Wrestling Network, providing your perfect podcast experience. All right, this is the MGB review of uh, Pan African World Diaspora event on February 15th, 2020, where they were going to crown their first wrestling champion. Um, a first week in 48 hours, a journey one year in the making, culminates as we will have crowned the first ever Pan African World Diaspora wrestling champion. Come witness history be made as someone takes home wrestling's richest new prize. Now, we went to the first event for this one, Mason, and um, so this was the second one. And once again, it was the same location in D.C. I think it was around 8th Street, somewhere around there. And, um, yeah, tickets once again, I think were about $20. I think Jackson was free. I think it was 10s and unders were free. And uh, we just turned up for this one. Last time we had tickets ahead of time, but with your new schedule, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to make this one or not. So we literally just waited until the day of. We did get there with plenty of time, because I think the last one was a sellout. So I was like, hey, we're going to get there like an hour before or half an hour before, whatever. And actually, we got there 15 minutes before doors were supposed to open, and it was already open. So we got in there kind of early. I do remember seeing a couple of things. One, we saw Jordan Blade warming up, and I didn't even know Jordan Blade was actually going to be in this event. So I was like, well, that's pretty cool. And also, we saw doctors in there as well. Now, we know that if you want to wrestle, there's certain requirements that you have to go through. Like, you've got to get a physical or something. I don't know if you've got to get blood work. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. But you could actually see them doing that ringside, which is kind of interesting to see what was actually um, going on for that one. Um, anything you remember before we actually get to the first event at all? Um, no. All right. Um, the ring announcer was somebody different this time. The ring announcer this time was Meredith Bell. I did manage to find that out. And the first match was actually the quarterfinal. So most of this event was set up around this being a tournament to try and crown the new champion. So to be champion, you had to win three matches. So the first quarterfinal was Mr. Grimm with Sean Carlson. That's the person who throws out all the money. And the person he was supposed to face, I believe, was Barrington Hughes. And he wasn't available. And that was one of the names I saw at the time. I was like, hey, do you remember seeing Barrington Hughes on MLW? Like, he's a really big guy. I was like, that's going to be really cool to go see him. He wasn't there. And the person, so he threw out an open challenge. The person who did the open challenge, as far as I can tell, is the owner of the organization. Oh. Which I didn't know at the time. I've just written down the owner, question mark? I think. That's as far as I can tell. Now, I can tell you actually why Barrington Hughes wasn't there, because I actually went and looked up. February 13th, on Facebook, he posted, As some of you may know, I have been hospitalized since January the 5th with lung issues. I am not doing a GoFundMe, because that's not my style to take something for nothing. What I am asking for is support in buying a shirt. So, he's been hospitalized for five weeks at that point. So, I'm pretty sure they probably realized he wasn't going to take part in this event at that point. But obviously, when your poster comes out two months ahead of time so um, i haven't seen any updates since um, i'm hoping barrington's doing okay um, but yeah obviously a good reason why he wasn't actually at that event if he'd been in hospital for five weeks all right mason what do you remember about the match you said you couldn't find your notes for this one um the money man was very good on the mic okay the i forgot his name sean carlson yeah and a huge ram spine buster kick for mr grim and mr grim wins with a Sean Carlson distraction. Aha, uh -huh, which often has happened for this one. Now, I got a tweet from at Johnny X underscore bruh. Uh, hey yo, at AEW Women's Champion Nyla Rose Beast was in the building at poor, at poor WC. Almost lost my beep, but at Mr. Grimm is for hire. Bounced me, powerbombed me, and kneed me in the head, and I couldn't see straight for the rest of the night. That's what made me realize that I was like, oh, that guy's kind of like the owner. I think when I saw looked on his Twitter profile, it says like owner or co-owner or whatever. So yeah, he's part of the organization itself. So I don't know if he normally wrestles. I'm going to guess if you own a wrestling organization, you obviously have an interest in wrestling. You probably wrestled before. Yeah. Wouldn't you think? It'd be kind of weird that you're doing it. Nah, I'm just going to do this. I don't really like wrestling. but I... So yeah, so he was involved in that match. And I'm sure we'll mention the fact that Nyla Rose was in the building a little bit later on. All right, quarterfinal two was Christian Robinson versus DK Meadows. What you got for this one, Mason? Um, there was a fast count, and Christian was two inches from from oh hitting the speaker on the on a three sixty. Uh huh. And Christian, 
He runs and backflips using DJ for the win. Now, I was really impressed with Christian Robinson in this one. I hadn't seen him before. I was trying to write his name down, and after his match, I tried to look up for him on Twitter, and I couldn't find him. I didn't realize at that time it was Christian with a K, so that's why I couldn't find him. And obviously, Robinson's kind of a common last name. And, um, yeah, his flips were really good. Like, he really got, he really came up with some really uh, innovative offense. And when I've seen some more stuff on Twitter since, that's definitely his sort of go-to things. He also showed him doing a clip on a skateboard, I think, as well. So, yeah, he's got some mad skills, that's for sure. Um, really enjoyed this match. And um, as far as I can tell, Christ Christian Robinson won this one, right? Because yep. he made it into the and next round. And after the match, there was a handshake and then a low blow by DK. Ah, so it wasn't that seems familiar actually, yes, because he was unhappy with that one. All right, the third quarter final was DeAndre Jackson versus Prince Carnu. And I remembered both of those people from the first event as well, so I knew both of those people. I think Prince Carnu, is he the, like the Nigerian prince or something? Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's Trisha Dora's husband. Oh, I remember you saying that. Because afterwards. he was always crying after. The, after her match, uh -huh. and he seemed really happy, and they hugged after, and they have the same music. Oh, they do? Oh, I did not notice that at all. Oh, that's a great... You didn't tell me that part before, because before it was just like, well, they could just be friends, or obviously if they're wrestling and they're close to each other, but yeah, you didn't tell me that part at all. Oh, okay. I, I honestly don't know the answer to that one at all. Um, as we already talked about these on the first match, Mason, um, I don't have anything extra to add to this, so go ahead. Tell us about the match. Oh, Shay comes out with the Uno wild card mm -hmm. and and O'Shea and Kanu gang up on DeAndre then O'Shea turns on DeAndre does corkscrew suplex to O'Shea and then a 3D to DeAndre O'Shea is so tall that Kanu only need his armpit <laughs> now, I remember seeing O'Shea as we were walking right. in, because I was like, I didn't know O'Shea was going to be here as well. I was kind of excited by that. And he had his merch table set up as well. I was like, oh, great. I'm always happy to see O'Shea anyway. So, and yeah. O'Shea wins with a Death Valley driver. He did. Now, we didn't really know the deal with those Uno cards. I'm still not quite sure how they got them. I think if you win a certain match, you get an Uno card. Yeah. However, O'Shea, them. however, O'Shea wasn't at the first event, though. So I don't know how he won his, because we saw later other people had Uno cards and was like, oh, that's kind of strange. Or as somebody else said, we had Mayday sat next to us as well. And I don't know if it was this match. He's like, why wouldn't you just wait till the final yeah. and then use your Uno card? That's what I why would you wrestle a quarterfinal match and a semifinal match just to get... Why not just use it in the final? So I'm not sure what the stipulations were for using those Uno cards. And I don't think that was particularly made clear. However, it didn't really stop from the enjoyment of the match. And it always threw in... As soon as that happened, though, on that match afterwards, you were like, ooh... Any match now, as soon as you think someone's going to win, they might not win because somebody could come from the back with a Nuno card. So it kind of kept people on their toes a little you bit. You could just do a Seth Rollins. What does that mean? Like when he cashed in the money. Oh, at WrestleMania? Yeah. Right at the end? So it just comes in at the end. All right, fourth quarter final was the one I was really excited for. Um, Elo Neal versus Trisha Dora. I know Elo Neal had put out a, a promo on uh, Twitter saying that basically, hey, we know that everyone loves Trisha Dora, but I gotta beat Trisha Dora. Like, I don't get enough respect. I gotta make sure I beat Trisha Dora to make sure that people finally start respecting me a little bit more. Trisha Dora had another great match with um, Sasha Tasha Steeles mm -hmm. at Prime Time Club, which we're gonna talk about in another review. All right, spoiler alert. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, that we might have already released that one actually at that point. Eo pull, puts Trisha's fingers in the buckle, and at least they didn't get ripped. Oh off. gosh, I think that's when I turned at around. At least they didnn't get ripped off, like oh, like Warhorse's mouth. Oh gosh, I, yeah, I get. I remember looking away at that. Trish point. wins with a trip pin. Now, one of the videos I do remember from Twitter the day after was somebody was filming this match, and um, they showed you filming Trisha Dora in the ring. And then they panned across and they showed a girl who was dancing in the crowd and getting really excited by Trisha Dora. And then they panned back and then they showed the match again. And they get. I think it was really important to see that type of figure for, for young females, African Americans, to see somebody who can be their hero. And uh, Trisha Dora is great. I, I really like seeing her matches. Elo Neal put on a great display as well. And um, yeah, that's kind of set that one up for that. Now, the people started to come out a little bit quicker then because then they had their semi final matches as well. So the first semi-final match was uh, Mr. Grimm versus uh, Christian Robinson. And actually, we also got introduced to another wild card in this match, which I'm sure you'll mention at some point, which is uh, Darius Lockhart. So I looked up Darius because when he came out, I was like, that name sounds really familiar. And I could not remember why. I figured it out probably about a week after the event. 
there's a podcast called We The Indies, which I might have talked about a little bit. His podcast episode came out on October 9th, 2019, but I was months behind, and I was listening to them all back to back to back. So I remember listening to his, and it was really good. So um, it says on his Twitter feed, Strong Black Lead, Pro Wrestler, 24. I couldn't attend every protest, so I take the protest with me. Hashtag be a revolutionary. Um, PWI ranked him number 481 of the top 500 singles wrestlers uh, in 2018. Really? Yeah, so I knew he was a big name. I knew I'd heard of him. I knew I'd heard that he was good, but I just couldn't remember. I don't think we've seen him in this area before, as far as I could remember. Um, he does have a pin tweet called Political, which is a really good short that I would recommend. It's only about two minutes, but it's kind of like a little documentary style thing that I really liked. The next day, he had to appear in Florida at Fest Wrestling. That's a long way. If you're leaving DC around nine o'clock, and I do not know the answer to that one. And um, what else does it say? Looked through her matches. There was a few in England. Nope. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't think there was any significant organizations that I knew oh. or anything. Oh, I know why I put that. I looked through the matches to see if there was anything that I'd seen like when he was in England. Like I was wondering, oh, did we see him at like WrestleGate Pro perhaps or something like that? No, it wasn't that. And that's when I remembered it was the podcast that I'd actually seen him on. All right, talk us through this one then. He uses his Uno card, Darius, and Mr. Grimm, he rolls up Darius off the ropes into a a kick and Darius Lockhart didn't see finish looking behind at O'Shea. Uh-huh. So O'Shea interfered in this one a no, little no, bit. No, no, no. No. I didn't I saw Darius oh. So I think Darius Lockhart won and I was looking behind because because O'Shea kept peeking through the Oh, through the curtains? Yeah. yeah, we were sat right next to the curtains, and sometimes you'd see people peeking through. And we said to Jackson at one point, like, who's that? Because Isaiah, wasn't Isaiah Frazier there? I think Isaiah Frazier yeah. was there, and he knows Isaiah Frazier. So, yes, no, you're right. Darius Lockhart definitely won this one, which took him into the final. And I was really glad. And at halftime, I actually posted on Twitter. I was like, I'm so glad that Darius won this, because I really want to see more of Darius Lockhart. Because I hadn't seen him before. And, uh, yeah, I was very impressed with what I saw in that first match. All right, the second semi-final, not that she had much rest, it was uh, Trisha Dora. Now, I didn't get to put who she faced. Was it DeAndre Jackson or Prince Carno? I think it was Prince Carno. Oh, it was O'Shea. Oh, because O'Shea used his wild card, didn't he? Ah, and that's the part where I got confused, because I looked, I was like, I don't think it's either of those two. Yeah, so Trisha Dora versus uh, O'Shea she Edwards. She closed lines at, uh, O'Shea, and then does nothing. And, and that was the end of the match? Nothing. nothing happened? Oh, does nothing, and okay. Uh, I didn't get the end. I had a feeling. Didn't Mr. Grimm come out then and interfere in this one as well? Or is that later on? Perhaps that's later on then. Perhaps that know, might actually be the final. I didn't final. have the ending for some reason. Oh, uh, okay. I know Trisha Dora won. That was for sure. And I think pretty much everyone wanted Trisha Dora to win this one. Yeah. So, all right. So, Trisha Dora won. And we figured at that time it's probably got to be intermission. Because they've already had only six matches already. And sure enough, it was the intermission. Uh, we went outside again. We did a little walk. Um, when we came back, um, after we sat down, I, t I talked to Mayday. And he said, oh, Nyla Rose is in the building. I was like, oh, Nyla Rose is here? And then uh, it was getting started. And I was like, ah, I couldn't see where she was. I was like, oh, I would really like to picture with her. That would have been kind of cool. And yeah. then he showed me his phone and he got a selfie with her. I was I like, oh. so <laughs> mad if we would have got a mist of... of a, Nyla Rose, a picture with Nyla Rose because Jackson wanted a pack of cookies. Just because he needed to get something from the car. I would agree on that one as we well. We probably would have caught her, though, because we probably would have walked unless she went to the right. I don't know. Anyway, we, um, anyway we'll talk a bit more about that situation later. Now, the next two matches. So the first one I've got here uh, was Isaiah Frazier versus Killian McMurphy. That's the second match. And that was a second there, match there after the intermission? And, there was a hot and cold match versus Billy Dixon versus I don't know who else it was. Oh, I thought that was later. I just put John uh, Doe. Mm, no, that's later. Oh, I have that as later. On well, Billy have... Dixon versus Chris Andino. Yeah. It, that was la No, you missed a match then. Isaiah Frazier versus Killian Murphy. Yeah, I have that first. after. You did? Yeah. All right, well, I don't know. All right, then we'll go with that match then. All right, Billy Dixon versus Chris Andino for the Chocolate City Championship. Um, all right, go ahead. So, wait, who's the other person? Chris. Chris? So, he hit. All right, do you want to explain what the hot and cold thing is first? Because so, I've never heard of this before. So, the, the announcer told us where the, we had the, where they had the pin to get, the, to get it. Mm -hmm. And 
you had to be in that specific place to get the pin. Correct. And we had to yell hot and cold yes. whenever they were near the pin place. Correct. And it was actually right in front of the hard cam. So they didn't know where they could get a pin. So you could get a pin, but if it was in the wrong place, it yeah. didn't count. And as you got closer to it, you'd say hot or you say cold. I thought it was kind of interesting, but it was kind of confusing. And i got to admit, I didn't see where it was. Luckily, Mayday saw where the place was, so he told me. Otherwise, I would have been even more confused. So Chris, he hits hand hard on the post, and Billy wins the belt. <laughs> wow, great well, insight. I got no, more for this. No, I didn't Chris even keeps write anything. hitting in the wrong place, but uh -huh. then... I think, yeah, Billy jumped off the ladder. Well, I can't believe this was literally right in front of us because they told everyone, move, move. So the front row had to leave and we're on the third row. And we kind of had to move a little bit, but then we were kind of good. Um, he hit Billy on top of the head with a tray. It was like, an, I can't say it was an unprotected uh, chair shot. It was an unprotected tray shot. And um, yeah, I think he hit him with a trash can as well. And there was like several things that were right in front of us before they finally moved on to the other side. But yeah, I, th I thoroughly enjoyed this match. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Billy Dixon later on Twitter, there are many times both in wrestling and life where there has been enormous pressure to choose between my blackness and my queerness. Thank you for never making have to contemplate that impossible choice. Thank you for seeing me. I am proud to represent this company. A lot of different wrestlers had positive things to say about the organization. And not surprisingly, I, I, I really do like Fight Club. Does queer mean gay? Yes. Yeah, so he's talking about the fact of he will obviously be an African American, and the fact that he's gay as well, and the fact that he never has to choose between those two things about which one is his character. The fact he's allowed to be himself, which is as exactly as it should be. That shouldn't make any difference at all. Well, he's not like Effie in the ring. He's not. No, he's not as out as what Effie is. Effie's very open about that in his character in the ring. Um, but yes, no, he's not like that at all. But then you don't have to be that. Yeah. You don't have to be that open about it in the ring, but he's allowed to be himself, which I think is really important. All right, the final. Uh, Trisha Dora. Oh, sorry. So we've got to go back then because you think this is the next match. So um, Isaiah Frazier versus Killian McMurphy. Killian wins. Um, I don't have much for this one. I'm, yeah. I was kind of surprised. I didn't really think they needed this match, actually. This was one, because both of those are big names, as far as I'm concerned. I love Isaiah Frazier. Killian McMurphy is a big name as well. Killian was playing a great heel character on for this one as well. He was very loud, and he was kind of annoying everybody, which was the way he should be. But I didn't think they actually needed this one at all. I thought they could have gone kind of straight to the final. But it wasn't that it was a bad match, but it kind of made the card feel a little bit longer than it needed to be. I was starting to get a little, I wouldn't say tired, but I was like, like come on, bring on the final don't tease me anymore Let, i know you've got to give them a rest i sort of thought that having had the intermission that you could have gone i'm not straight to that final necessarily but you could have had that match then you could have had the final and i think that would have been good um i think it kind of got lost in the wash a little bit this one uh, it was a good match but i didn't think it needed to happen and if this match hadn't have happened i wouldn't have noticed it at all and having said that there was then one more match as well Um, Jordan Blade versus Amber Rodriguez and Ashton Starr. Um, Ashton Starr on Twitter from February 13th. Hey, at Pord WC. The Petty Prince has some words for both at Jordan Blade and at Amber Juan Rodriguez. See you lovely ladies this Saturday in my hometown of Washington, D.C. So he didn't have far to travel for this one. Now, Amber, I didn't recognize at all. We had to ask somebody about what her name was. So I think I've heard of her before. In an old novel pro, was I, she in CCW? It wasn't her. I looked for her. I looked for that. It wasn't her. I thought that as well. And that's when I started to look for other things as well. Now, we'll see in a second then. Perhaps there's a different one. All right. Rodriguez was trained by WWE's Dwayne Gill, known to wrestling fans as the comedic character Gilberg. Now, that's kind of interesting to me oh. because actually last weekend, Gilberg had his last ever match, which was in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So I, we actually, I actually looked at going to that one, but we were kind of busy. Is he old? Uh, he's retiring, yes. I don't exactly know how old he is. Uh, she made a debut in 2012. Um, Rodriguez returned to WXW in 2014 on February the 1st, uh, where she defeated Nyla Rose. I was like, well, that's kind of interesting, as we know Nyla Rose was in the building. Um, during mid-2014, Rodriguez joined the MCW Women's Championship hunt. First, she wrestled in a tournament final, uh, losing to Renee Michelle. And at a WWE tribute to the legends, Rodriguez successfully challenged the new champion, Rene Michelle, thus winning the title. A feud between James and Rodriguez, that's Mickey James, in 2015 concluded um, in a Loser Leaves MCW match won by Mickey James, so she had to leave that. Um, this was also Rodriguez's final match, leading to her retirement on November 14th. 
So this was 2015, I think I just said. And that was it. She'd retired. I was like, oh. I was like, well, how's she at this match? So I went back trying to look on Twitter to find out. Um, Cage match has her next match listed as January 17th, 2020. Oh. So she had nearly five years out. And so that she'd only been back for a month when we actually saw her at um, that organization. Um, what do you got for this one? Mm. Oh, having just mentioned Esh Effie. Um, Ashton's actually going to be appearing at Effie's WrestleMania event in April as well. I did see that as well. Ashton? Yes. Oh, Ashton Star. Um, so the the announcer said that it was a fatal four way, but only three wrestlers came out. That's what I thought as well. <laughs> I thought they said, that. "Did we both just miss here?" I, I'm I'm a bit deaf, so sometimes I miss things. But so Jordan gets armbar on Amber, and sh her scream is so loud. And Ashton won and gets his Uno wild card. Yeah, and once again, I thought it was a thoroughly enjoyable match. If they hadn't have had this match, I don't think it would have affected the card at all in any way, shape, or form. And finally, we did get to the main event, which turned out to be then Trisha Dora versus Darius Lockhart for the title. All right, as we've already talked about both of these people before, go, go ahead, tell us about oh, the final. Dad loved this match because there's so many Pete Dunn fingers. Oh, this was the one where I looked away as well. Okay, yeah. And I heard a loud... I heard loud... I don't... Oh, snaps. And Mr. Money comes in with with wild card. And with Mr. Grimm. And power bombs off the top rope from Trish Adora to Mr. Grimm. And O'Shea power bombs Trish when reaching. Darius rolls her up for 2.9 after... After Trish wins, the whole locker room comes out and, and starts clapping. Now, I would put this final five minutes of this event up against any event I've ever seen. The crowd was so into this. We really thought that Trisha Dore was going to win it. And then when Mr. Grimm came out, I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. I kind of forgot about the wild card for a minute. And you were like, it's obvious. Mr. Grimm's going to win now. I was like, it's so obvious. Like, before, I was like, Trish is definitely winning this. And then I was like, no, Trish is definitely not winning this anymore. And there was false finishes. Actually, Mr. Grimm finally did get taken out. And it was between Trish and Darius at the end. And I got a 90-second clip that I recorded. It's just one. It's just non-stop. They're going at each other the whole time. And, yeah, after she won, the whole wrestling group came out. They all banged their heads on the floor. Everyone was shouting her name. Uh, she kind of broke down a little bit with the emotions of it all. Uh, it was an amazing oh. moment. Um, at Sugar Dunkerton, what at Trisha Dora 202 has done tonight is important. Different, necessary, inspiring, lovely. A black woman with a top title in a company. The face, the top spot. The king is dead, long live the queen. At Pord underscore WC. Now, actually, they actually asked on Twitter a few weeks, a few days later, hey, um, Trisha's facing somebody at the primetime pro event next. I honestly can't remember who it is. Do you think she will win? Who do you think she should face next at Fight Club? And what are you having for your lunch? And different people commented on the what they thought was. And my comment was, and I didn't tag him, was I put Sugar Dunkerton. The person whose quote I just read out. Because we remember him from Nova Pro. Or I seem to remember him better than you do. You don't really remember him as well as I do. And I mentioned him. I didn't tag him. Trish tagged him in the event. And uh, he actually responded. And he was like, call me. I was like, oh! I was like, I was like, the fact that this could even be a match has got me really excited now. I would love to see Sugar Dunkerton versus Trisha Dora. I think that would be a really good matchup, but we'll have to see how that works what out. What did you put for the lunch? Um, I can't remember what I was having. I think I was having chicken that day. I can't remember what I was having with it. Um, I think it was like leftovers from the night before or something. But yeah, it was kind of a fun little tweet. All right, unless you got anything else, I got some things for the wrap-up. Oh, wait. So I thought Darius was going to ruin the whole moment because he just snatched the belt from Trisha Dora, and then, and then he gave it to her. Yeah, he kind of went down on one knee and kind of was like, you're a worthy winner, and give it to you. Now, I'm not sure if I have it written down on here. He actually is injured as well. I don't know if it was injured in that match particularly, um, but I did see somewhere a few days later, um, I actually responded to him. I was like, oh, man, I'm really sorry to hear that because I was really... I think it was like a week after the event I saw that he was actually injured. So there was a few... I don't know how seriously, but there was a few people saying like, oh, that's too bad, man. I said, like, if you're only out for a couple of days, you're not going to post that you're injured. So uh, Meredith Bell, the announcer on Twitter, uh, words can't express how blessed and thankful I am to be part of this crazy pro wrestling community. Thank you so much for having me be part of the blackest event of the year. Let's do this again soon. Um, at Pord underscore WC, thank you at Primetime Pro Wrestling for setting the standard on what wrestling in DC is. Thank you for all the performers who took a chance with us. Thanks to everyone who brought a ticket 
bought a ticket to our events, either returning or sight unseen. Thank you for making us have our first sellout. Those two organizations often give praise to each other, and I really like that there's that positivity between, I don't want to say rivals, but people obviously competing for business as well. Um, one more from them. Uh, they posted, we are pro-POC, we are pro-black, we are pro-trans, we are pro-LGBTQ+, we are Fight Club. POC, I believe, is people of color or person of color. And I think I had one more Twitter thing. Um, at Primetime Pro Wrestling, congratulations to at Trisha Dora and at the Billy Dixon for their massive historical championship wins at Pod underscore WC tonight. DC is a wrestling town. Take note. The only other thing I do remember from that is Billy didn't get his belt because they said it wasn't ready. I don't know if you remember that. So about two weeks later, um, they actually there was actually pictures of it. It finally arrived. So uh, Billy does have his Chocolate City Championship title belt now. All right. Oh. We haven't talked about the most important thing now. All right, so the match, all the matches are finished. Oh, yeah. Okay. We walk over and we get a picture with Nyla Rose. We did. We saw her because we, I couldn't see her. And then Mayday was like, oh, look, she's over there. So we went round and I was really nervous. I was talking to her. I was like, would it be okay like if we got a, if the boys got a picture with you? And she couldn't have been nicer. Somebody tried to block our picture. There was somebody who wasn't really concentrating. And we can't, they kind of got moved they kind of got moved out of the way. And then we got your picture. I didn't even thank her. For, on, uh, sorry, I didn't even congratulate her on just winning the AEW Championship as well. We got to see that very first event where she lost to Riho. And then literally, probably a week before, she literally just took the AEW Championship. And that would have been an obvious thing to say. But yeah, I was. I think we were both kind of starstruck. Yeah. I was like, that's a huge name. Like, you got an AEW Champion right there? And um, yeah, that was really cool. I know that she is from DC. And I know that you... I don't think you did know that. But that's really no. cool that she came out to come and support... Obviously, I'm going to guess people she's wrestled with in the past and people she knows well before she went to AEW. But I thought that was a really cool event. I wonder if that's why they put Pro Trans in in fight club um i think they put that in anyway because um, they're all inclusive yeah and they've been they made that very clear right from day one that um anybody is welcome there and everybody will get their fair chance and i think that's one of the reasons why and once again i think they sold out this event when she got to the start there was lots of seats there there wasn't much room to stand around the outside so i don't know if they took if there was limits on who could come in but yeah, that atmosphere was absolutely rocking at the end. There were so many people there who were cheering and screaming, and yeah, it was great. I'm not sure if they've announced the next event, because last time, after that first one, I was like, hey, tell us when the next one is. And they're like, yeah, we don't know yet. We'll let you know, and, and look on Twitter, whatever. So I think it's like four months between events, I think, from the last one to this one. So I don't know. Perhaps in the summer might be when the next one is, but we will. whenever it is, I know I want to be there for sure. Club a few weeks ago. We didn't yes. even know you were going to be there. Yeah. So that was a surprise. What can you tell about us about Trisha Dora? How significant of an event is that? It's huge. I feel as if just putting in words, I, get, I do it an injustice by trying to put it in the words. The, the energy in that building, that building is no, not even half the size of the building we're in now. But the energy, though, could be matched. Like everybody in here, like you couldn't touch what was going on there. Trish winning was such a moment because it's 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 a it's a thing of like little black girls have someone to look up to. If you go back and look at those pictures, there are little girls who are just wide eyed, just like what? Because growing up, we're as a black male, I'm, I, there's things that I was told I couldn't do um, because there was no way before me to do it. Sometimes the hardest thing we have to do as as human beings or is forge a trail that no one's never done before. It's one of the hardest things that you'll ever have to do because there is no there's no roadmap. There's no work. You have to do that work. And because of that is why it's so hard. That's the reason why so many people quit, because it's hard. But for Trish to have this moment in the sun and everyone's just like, all hail the queen. It's huge for everybody, regardless of who you are. It's just look, look, look who is at the forefront of all of this. Look what she has done. Look what she's continued to do. And it's... And it's 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 inspiring. I wish I had a little girl, just so I'm like, look at this. I, I hold her up like Simba, like yes. Um, I I love it. Every time I see her, I I swell with pride. 
It has nothing to do with me at all, but I just see it. I'm like, mm, yes. It's such a great feeling. Even just from a wrestling perspective, I told her today, that last five minutes of that event holds up with anything, anything. I've ever seen anywhere. And everybody in was on of, their feet and against that ring. And we saw you all come out and then hit in the ring yeah. afterwards. The fans were going crazy. It, there was, was, it, was, it, was, it was real. It was all it's real, amazing. man. Yeah, it was, it was real. amazing. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. Bye. Music was Zigzag by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. HTTP colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by 3.0.